We will look now at instruction scheduling in the compiler. Note that this is different from what happens in a Tomasulo type scheduler, where the hardware is trying to reorder instructions in a different way than they were arranged by the compiler. Now the compiler will actually try to do a similar thing. Here's a sequence of instructions that can happen. We load a value from the address in R1 into R2. We add R0 to that. We store the result back into that memory location. We next move the memory address four places forward so that we are looking at the next, for example, element in an array in memory. And then we compare the pointer to some sort of end of array pointer. And if they're not equal, we jump back to the loop. So these are five instructions out of which a single iteration of a loop is composed of. Let's say that we have a very simple processor that can only look at the very next instruction. So it's not really trying to have reservation stations and execute out of order. In that case, what might happen is there would be this load. And let's say it takes two cycles to actually get the value into this register from the cache. That means that the next cycle, the processor cannot do this add. It has to stall because the result in R2 is not available yet. In the next cycle, it will be adding R0 to the value in R2. Let's say now that the add takes a few cycles, let's say three. So only here can we store. The next instruction doesn't depend on the store, so let's say we can do it in the next cycle. But then this add again takes three cycles, let's say. So we have two stalls before we can do this branch. So let's say that the compiler is trying to help the processor do better than this. If we still have the same processor, but we wanted to execute these instructions faster than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cycles per iteration. How can we do that? Well, what the compiler will try to do is it knows that after this load, we cannot do this add until two cycles later. So it's going to try to find something that can be here. So we need something that doesn't depend on the load and can be done here. Now, we can see that the add does depend on the load, so it cannot go here. The store needs the result of the add, so it cannot move here. But the add actually can go here because the add doesn't depend on the R1 value here. So the compiler is going to try to move this add i here. So we want a schedule in which the add i is here because this processor can do only one instruction at a time in the order in which they're listed in the program. That would mean moving this add here in the program. Let's see how that would be done. So conceptually, we want this add here. Note, however, that while the load gets the same value of R1 that it did before, the store now gets R1 that has already been incremented by 4. So we have moved this add because this R1 is now larger than it should be. We have to fix the offset here so that it loads from R1 minus 4. When we remove this add, the branch still sees the correct value of R1 because it needs to see the incremented value. And the new program looks like this. The black stuff is the stuff that has moved or changed. And the blue stuff is what has remained exactly the same as before. Now let's see what happens to our schedule. Now we have a load. And instead of the add here being the next instruction, so we had to stall, the next instruction is this add. This add can proceed in parallel with the load. It doesn't depend on the R2. So we can actually do this add here. So instead of a stall, we can now do our add i. This eliminates one of the stalls. The add here doesn't depend on this add, so it can still stay where it is. Now, in order to get to the store instruction, we still have to do the two stalls because the add here takes two cycles of stalling before we can use the result. So this store needs to stay here. But at this point, we have already done this add i. It's moved here. Of course, the store now needs to be modified this way. So this instruction is now like this. The add now goes away. So we have just removed one cycle here. Next, when can we do this branch? Well, the add has happened here. We cannot use R1 until 1 to the third cycle from there. So pretty much at any point after here, the branch actually is safe to go as far as R1 is concerned. Note that here we had to stall because of this. So we have just eliminated two more cycles here. And now we can do our branch. So pretty much we had plenty of stalls then. Now we have only two stalls and the rest of the loop body is scheduled. So pretty much the idea of instruction scheduling is to find instructions that can be done in place of stalls and thus avoid having too many stalls in the processor schedule.